Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is adjusting the blower motor airflow on a furnace or an air conditioning system. So we're doing that at the air handler, the package unit, or the, the furnace itself. So we're going to be going over the PSE blower motor, ones that have a capacitor in them, such as that. We're going over how to adjust the airflow on systems that have a ECM multi-speed motor, such as this one right here. And we're also going over variable speed blower motors such as the 16 pin connector or the 4 pin connector. Make sure to check out our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and ebook, both available at our website at acservicetick.com. We also have our paperback and our quick reference cards available over amazon.com. So here we have a 120 volt PSE blower motor, and that means permanent split capacitor. And the capacitor is usually mounted onto the brown and the brown with the white stripe on it. But make sure that you're always turning the power off to the furnace before you are trying to change any speeds on the control board of the blower motor. I'm going to show you the control board in just a second, but I want to show you how to measure in order to determine which one is the highest speed and which one's the lowest speed. We have our multimeter set on resistance and we're measuring in ohms. We have our red probe connected into our common wire for our blower motor. Now we're going to read our resistance value on the red wire. So we're reading the resistance value between the red and white, and we read 5.3 ohms. Between yellow and white, we read 4.3 ohms. Between blue and white, it's 3.3 ohms. And between black and white, it's 2.6 ohms. So you can see that our resistance value changes depending on the wire, and our lowest resistance value is going to be our highest speed. Our highest resistance value is going to be our lowest speed. So that's how you can tell what speed is what in a PSE blower motor. So here we're looking at a 120 volt furnace control board. And so we have our white wire on our neutral and our medium or our second from highest speed right here is on the heat and our black is on the cooling. And these other two wires on M1 and M2, those ones are on the spare terminal. So they're not being used. Those aren't connected to anything. So it may say spare, it may say park, or it may say M1 or M2. So you want to make sure, though, to have your, your heat speed and your cooling speed matched with the capacity of the system, because in cooling speed, you want to make sure that you have around 400 CFMs for every 12,000 BTUs of heat removal capacity. And for heating, you want to make sure to not overheat the furnace, because if you put this blower speed too low for comfort, what's going to happen is you're going to end up having the supply temperature increasing and increasing to a point where the thermal limit will end up popping. You don't want to do any damage to the furnace, but you also don't want to have your heat speed set too high because it's uncomfortable inside the building. Now, just like the last blower motor we checked, this blower motor, you'd have to change the speed at the control board. And this one is an ECM multi-speed blower motor that does not have the speed connectors here, but would have the speed connectors over at the end of the wires that are going to the control board. So you have your high voltage always going to a blower motor. And then you also have your common for your 24 volts. And the rest of these wires are your speed wires for your, your blower motor in order to operate. So you have your red, orange, blue, and yellow. But you really need to look at what the program is for M1, M2, M3, M4 on the control board to determine what speed each of these are programmed to run at because you can't just go by a normal color code. You need to follow the wire diagram inside the furnace. But that's how you do it. You just change, say, the if the black uh, was on cooling and you needed to lower the speed a little bit, then you would just go to the next lowest fan speed. In this case, it might be blue, but once again, you need to look at that wiring diagram because the manufacturer that is using this blower motor in their equipment may only set maybe two or even three of these colors as actual speeds. So that's something to be aware of. This is an X13 ECM blower motor. So this is a multi-speed blower motor. And up at the top, you have the line voltage connections as well as the 24 volt common. And down here, you have your speed taps. So you want to check the, the wiring diagram of the furnace air handler or package unit that this is installed in to know which of these taps down here that one, two, three, four, and five on this module are programmed. So on a, say a package unit, you may only have three, four, and five programmed, or maybe only two, three, and four. But say this is an air conditioning only setup and coming off of the control board, you have 
the black wire coming off the cooling tap. Well, say the blower motor speed was too much and you wanted to reduce it, and your program on your module said that five was your highest speed and four was second from highest, what you could do is you could switch out your black wire with your, with your yellow wire, and that would end up lowering your fan speed. So you could do that at the, at the blower motor here if you have these types of terminals, but if you have a plug here instead, you need to make that adjustment at the control board. So just make sure that the power is off whenever doing any adjustments. So this is a variable speed blower motor with a 16 pin connector for your speeds. And this is a Gentech 2.3 and it's connected to a 24 volt air handler control board. And you have your 16 pins connected down here as well as on your violet wire, your blue wire, your orange, your black, and your white wires. So I can't tell you how often I come up to these air handlers and our speeds are not set properly. So you can see that there's multiple adjustments for your speeds, your on off delay. Uh, so you wanna have that set to either this one right here, your zero 90, so it comes on right away and takes 90 seconds to shut off. Or maybe it's 30 seconds before it turns on and 90 seconds, that one's not used that often, or it can be zero and zero. Now you see that you're, you have an AC heat pump CFM adjustment, so you can be normal or you're low or you're high. So you would just pull this pin connector off if you wanted to lower this down, say to, to take more humidity out of the building, you could run at a lower CFM. Right here on your orange wire, you are picking your type if you want heat pump comfort, heat pump efficiency, or just AC. In this case, we would just leave it on AC. This is a big one right here is your size of your air conditioner or heat pump. So if it's a 36,000 BTU, it's on the correct terminal here. But if it was a, a four ton, then if you left it on the 36, you're going to be uh, missing one ton of airflow. So you want to set it on your 48 if you have a 48,000 BTU air conditioner or heat pump. And then you have, if you have auxiliary heat strips, you want to set it to the correct blower speed for the kw heat strips that you have so 10 kw heat strips or 15 or 20 in this case we just leave it on the uh on the 10 kw so it's real important to go ahead and set these and then verify your cfms after you adjust them this is an ecm 3.0 blower motor and so this is a variable speed blower motor with only four connections at the bottom you're not going to adjust where the wires are going in at to change the speeds you have this control board communicating with this module in order to determine the the airflow volume and this control board is out of a variable speed furnace with a modulating gas valve and also a variable speed inducer motor and so you're just going to be adjusting the the blower speeds based on these dip switches here. So you need, definitely need the, the installation instructions for this furnace in order to be able to tell how to set these dip switches. So what you could do is you could just look up the model number and also write installation and PDF maybe in a Google search and you'll be able to download the installation manual if you don't have it there with the furnace. But on this SW1 uh, terminals right here, SW1-1 to SW1-1, E, the three, four, and five have to do with the airflow. And also over here, you have your continuous fan, and this is your SW3, and also your, your SW2 right here for your air conditioning size. So you need to adjust those based on the installation instructions for the particular furnace that you have in order to get the right airflow. It's very important, and, and once again, I come up to a lot of furnaces that are not set properly, and just don't have the correct airflow for the system. Now for these dip switches, you just take a little flathead screwdriver with the power off and be turning them to the on or to the off and whatever pattern on this block uh, resembles the, the CFM value that you need. So you need to match that with the installation manual picture in order to get the correct CFM value. In order to measure airflow, you could use a flow capture hood. You could use a rotating vane anemometer. You could use a hot wire anemometer. You could also use the temporize formula, and we have a video on that in the description section below. We also have that as part of our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. And in that book, we go over troubleshooting some airflow problems by reading static pressures. We go over just all the steps it takes to prepare a system for refrigerant and checking the refrigerant charge and troubleshooting. 
So we have our, our paperback and ebook, as well as our quick reference cards over at our website at acservicestick.com. And we also have our quick reference cards and paperback available over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.